Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today's presentation is a follow-up of a previous presentation with the same title called Qualities of a Good Researcher, but today I'm going to elaborate further. Well, the presentation of today is part of a playlist on academic modules, and as you can see, we are going to discuss how to choose your name, how to make sure that you are uh, promoting your digital ID, how to publish and review in open access, and how to join and disseminate, how to join communities and disseminate uh, knowledge in your field. And finally, some conclusions. So let's start with name and your digital ID. Well, we all know that we are operating under the uh, mode of publish or perish, and this is part of the academic uh, word. And in this sense, no quality measure is completely objective, but that is life. Even though many people would say publishing is not the quality uh, measure, but this is life, we have to accept it. However, this is also the rule of the game, meaning that if you want to play the game and join academia or join the scientific world, you have to be able to publish and ready to do it in a consistent, consistent way and bring in quality with it. Also, this publishing uh, um, will allow you to sustain your career and it will be an indicator of your qualities. And as I said, it's very difficult to measure any quality and any researcher, he or she has several qualities but one of them will be the publishing, and we are aware about that. Now, there is also another indicator that will be important. It will be not only your number of publications, but also the number of citations. So you need to make sure that you have an impact on the world, and through others reading your work and citing it, this is a sign that you are uh, contributing and having a valuable uh, contribution. And definitely by publishing, we should not forget our key message here is that we are advancing research and science. Uh, the basis of research is that we are uh, tackling uh, challenging problems and we are trying to cover certain knowledge gaps. And in this sense, when we publish, we are sure publishing something that is worth, uh, worthy and that is bringing value. So in this sense, it's very important. And definitely, when you publish, it motivates uh, scholars and this is the, the way how we uh, valorize our work or make sure our work has a value. Now, as you can see, one of the first thing you have to do, you need to have your Google Scholar account. There is no uh, exception for that. Any researcher, even if you are starting, finishing your master's or if you are in the master's, you need to start to create your own Google Scholar account. You can add to it a previous report that was published, your master's thesis, if you have a dissertation and so on. And this will be uh, uh, the first step to do, but make sure to clean up your Google list and remove any wrong articles because in many situations there is confusion. The algorithm that is fetching and comparing your name to other names might add to your list of publication uh, some uh, references or articles that are not relevant to you. Another important thing that you need to look at it very early on in your career is how you select your name because we, uh, as I mentioned at the end of the day, we are talking here about search engines that will locate every publication with your name. If you don't have a fixed name that is repeatedly used every time, it will be very difficult to have a consistent track of record and a list of publication, whether on Google uh, Scholar uh, or on Scopus. Plus, add to that that if you are going to uh, have your passport applying for uh, certificates, applying for visas, you will have also problems of inconsistencies. So in this sense, I advise you strongly to watch my video on how to choose your name and make sure that you are looking at uh, a right way to uh, articulate your name, and especially also for females who get married and maybe change uh, their name or their family name. So this video is very resourceful and you can find enough information. Make sure that you select one name, use it throughout your career. Also, one of the things that are very important for you as a researcher when you are uh, uh, developing your career is that you start to maintain your digital ID. You should need to know that you will be present uh, uh, in the digital world. Your presence will be measured through, for example, the Google Scholar account. So you need to build and maintain your digital ID. And there is a video about how to uh, create a research digital ID. Don't hesitate to watch it. But also make sure that you are not only on Google, but you need to have a Scopus account. And definitely you need to have uh, ORCID, which is a, a um, global uh, unique identifying a system that gives you a number, a unique number associated to your name. By that, nobody can go confused about your name. And don't hesitate, that, uh, don't hesitate to do that because it's very important. In many cultures, uh, we can find repetitive names and it becomes sometimes very difficult for uh, others to uh, identify you. So through this ORCID, 
this will be possible. And I strongly also advise you to create an account on uh, ResearchGate to make sure that you are also uh, sharing your publications there. So this is one of the important uh, um, um, places where you have to uh, create accounts and make sure that you are present in, in these platforms. Also, another important platform that I strongly advise that you need to be present at is the Web of Science. The Web of Science is very important to be present. You, I strongly directly to go make a profile because uh, on the Web of Science you can have a record of your publications, you can have a record of uh, your um, reviews, you can have a record of editing uh, roles if you had and even if you are reviewing uh, grants, you can have a record of that. So I strongly to have a Web of Science um, um, account and as you can see here you can find all the publications that are published and you can even have the peer review uh, journals that you did any activities for peer reviewing as you can see here I have uh, several uh, examples and then for every journal I, I reviewed there is a number associated this is the number of times uh, the, um, I reviewed for these journals and down here you can see the verified editor record so you can see how many time I play the role of an editor so the web of science is a very powerful uh, platform because from there uh, when we are in selection committees uh, selecting new candidates assistant professors or future researchers we always start looking at the web of science platform the, the number one platform for sure is Google Scholar and then if it's difficult uh, or if you want to have a detailed uh, review, uh, we go for Web of Science. It's also used for promotions. So I strongly advise you to create an account in Web of Science. Now I'm done with the first uh, part. I would like to talk about the second part of this presentation, which is to publish and how to review also for open access. It's very important in your scientific career that you make all scientific papers that you are publishing in a, a, a paywall journal accessible, meaning that if you are publishing in a journal that has a, a paywall or a registration or a subscription fee to allow others to download your work, you need to make sure as much as you can that your work is also available in an alternative format in open access. If you want to know more about it, there is a video about open access publishing and you will find enough details about where are the repositories where you can safely uh, leave a copy of your work so that others who are not allowed or they don't uh, have the means to pay the subscription fees, they can access your work. And as you know, in this video I talk about the different types of journal publishing, the green uh, journal publishing, the gold, the bronze and the diamond. And definitely I only strongly uh, recommend to publish in diamond uh, open access journals that are from the beginning, they are not having uh, article processing fees or article uh, article processing uh, charges and these and these journals at the same time they, they allow for peer review uh, and they are transparent. If you cannot find a diamond then go for uh, a green or a gold but at the end of the day don't forget the key message. The key message is to make always your publication accessible for everyone while not violating the uh, copyright or the uh, contract that you signed with the publisher and there's a lot of ways to um, turn around these uh, agreement, uh, just watch this video about open access publishing and you will get uh, um, a lot of tips about that. Now, another aspect that is very important and you need to position yourself from now on, uh, it's not only to publish because publishing is not the only key criteria of quality, you need to start to review because reviewing is the practice or the exercise that will allow you to renew your knowledge and to stay top on the game, uh, reading about the latest methods, techniques, themes and so on. So I strongly advise you to review for open access journals including green and diamond open access journals and not only golden journals so make sure that you diversify your review and not only review for subscription journals uh, in this sense we call them the golden journals. Uh, look at journals that are also having an open access uh, whether with article processing charges or without the diamond in this say, case but make sure that when you are reviewing you are not only reviewing for one type or one uh, uh, way of uh, journals. This is very important. If you want to know more about it, there is a video about open peer review and another one about peer reviewing in general, how to do it and how to submit a proper uh, peer review report. Well, let's move to the third part of today's presentation, which is joining a community, joining a scientific community and disseminating your knowledge. Well, it's very important to remind you that when we talk about science, we need to belong to a scientific community. So first advice, 
join a scientific community. Make sure that those people are serious, they are scientists, scientists not only professional. So become a member of a scholarly, a scholarly society, including professional associations, and review for its journal and conferences. And I can tell you that if there is a community that exists somewhere, and they do not publish, they do not have a conference, they do not have a journal, then by default this community, unfortunately, is either very young, I don't advise you to join them so far, uh, unless you are having another community that they are joining that are more mature and that they are publishing. Because either they are, not, uh, um, either they are young if they are not publishing, or they are not serious. So avoid these kind of communities, just make sure that whatever community you join, they have a conference and they have a journal so that you make sure that they are really having a common goal, which is advancing science. And as you can see here in this quadripartite uh, drawing, uh, we get uh, uh, distracted when we are doing sci science in many ways, as you can see. Uh, in, in research, there's the four different uh, types of research. There are research that is socially useful, there is research that is not socially useful, and there is research that will advance science, and there is research that will not advance science. Make sure that you totally avoid this uh, left-down uh, quadrant where you are not advancing science if you are doing research and you are not also having any social use of your work because then it, is, uh, it will be most probably a biased research, a poor design, no validation, no interest from uh, uh, end users and beneficiaries. And also, you should also be very careful with the two other quadrants, the one on the down right and the one on the top uh, uh, left, because if you are doing uh, not socially useful research, trying to advance science, then you will end up having a lot of theories with potential use. They are too abstract, but unfortunately they cannot be useful. And if you are on the left uh, up uh, quadrant where you are trying to uh, socially have useful work which is very applied, but in the same time it's not advancing science, then you will have applied research. It is too commercial uh, with commercial interest and it does not advance science. So in this sense you are not uh, um, really contributing uh, in the direction that we are looking forward. If you want to build a career as a scientist, you need to make sure that you are always in the quadrant number one, that you are doing socially useful uh, research, and in the same time, it is advancing science. Those are the two key criteria, and you should always remind yourself about it and make sure that that's what you are doing. Otherwise, it will be only applied research or only theoretical research with very low application. So star stay away from that. Now, once you join your community, community and you know that you are working on topics uh, trying to advance science, comes the second role of you as a researcher in this um, regard, which is dissemination your knowledge to the audience. And here it's very important to disseminate your publications to a wider audience beyond your peers, beyond the people who are like you, who understand, who are well-educated, who are scientists. And you need to reach out to journalists, you need to make effort to uh, science communication officers in your institution, policy makers and interested citizens. This requires a certain level of maturity and this requires also that your findings and your research has a certain value, but definitely it's a stage on your way as a scientist in your career. Whether you are young or uh, a senior doesn't make a difference. You need always to think about these aspects and to make sure that your work is accessible and reach out to those people. Don't expect they will come and fetch you. Try always to be ready for these moments. Start, for example, to have a weekly newsletter or a monthly uh, uh, newsletter and dedicated mainly not to talk about your personal uh, matters, uh, but mainly talking about the main contributions that you are bringing to others and how others can uh, have a benefit or make a use of what you are uh, producing. Also, share your paper uh, summaries in plain language for example, and write them in a professional plain language so that others, without jargons, without technical terms, so that others can easily understand them. And in this sense, you can also publish that on Wikipedia as an example. And for sure, you need to give academic uh, presentations and public talks too, as much as you can. It can be starting from a school up to uh, a TED talk, up to a meeting, conference, or a professional community or organization or an NGO. So don't hesitate to invest in that, and this is part of a scientist's career, is to make sure that they belong to a community and they disseminate the knowledge that they are producing. Also, I advise you, advise you strongly to publish uh, in open access data sets and open access code uh, uh, platforms. So don't hesitate if you have 
codes uh, or you have data sets to make them available for others. As for a scientist, uh, scientific data sets and open source codes, we have published many of them since last year in my lab. We are publishing a lot of data sets and codes and we are always trying to use uh, Dataverse or um, Zotero, uh, sorry, uh, data, um, Dataverse or um, Zenodo uh, as uh, repositories and we are also using, using GitHub to publish codes and scripts in Python or in MATLAB or other languages. So these are examples of collaboration. Why is this important? It will increase your web visibility. It will increase uh, the, your reputation because people will find you reliable because you're sharing your data set so others can reproduce your work and definitely it will bring you uh, academic credit. If you want to know more about it, I strongly advise you to watch the two videos. One is called Open Data and the other one is called Open Code and they will give you a lot of insights. So by that, I end up today's presentation, but allow me to share with you some final conclusions so that you are, we are on the same page before terminating this presentation. Well, my final tips here are clear. Make sure to advance science in your field. This is very important. Stay away from applied research that is only societal, only running behind companies and businesses, but on a scientific point of view, it is not advancing much science, and you are just working for industry. Unless your job description is in this domain and you like to work as a scientist in the industrial field and you are just working for applications that are solving day-to-day -day solutions without having an impact on uh, science, then it's fine. But if not, always keep critical and ask yourself, is my work is too applied, too, or too theoretical, too abstract? Can I make sure that it is advancing science or not? Also, you need to keep track of your record. Keeping track of your record, having a folder on your computer, starting to list your publication, naming them in order, and every year making sure what are the publications you published, conferences, journals, and so on, data sets, codes. You need to have a track of these publications, and you need to make sure that your track is transferred or identical in your repository of your institution, in the repository on Google Scholar, on ResearchGate, and on other platforms like Web of Science, like we talked today. And this is important, it takes time, but you need to do it. Make your data available so that others can use your work, follow it up, check it, and build on it so that others can benefit. And in the same time, you can see the evolution of your work. And definitely, you will need to disseminate your knowledge and experience in different ways, in different formats. You can do also videos uh, on, you, on YouTube or other platforms. And definitely, you will need to share always a paper summary uh, in plain language. So this is my advice to you, my final advice. Well, this was today's presentation. It was about the qualities of a good researchers. Don't hesitate to watch the previous video and the future videos. And I thank you for that. Today's presentation was about qualities of a researcher. It's a follow-up video and it's number two. Thank you very much for your attention and good luck with your career.